All right, I want to talk about another thing, which is uh, connected car. Connected car, if you think about where it is on the pyramid, <laughs> I'm, I'm killing you guys. That's awesome. Um, let, let, me, let me not kill you by, how's that? Yeah, good. You're like squinting and a little bead of sweat was coming down. It was sad. Uh, so connected car kind of fits in the space between small devices and mobile devices. In some ways, it looks kind of like a phone or a tablet. Um, in some other ways, it's kind of this low-level thing that controls the flow of data that travels across the CAN bus in the car, which is the internal bus on which like, all the data exchange on a vehicle happens. Um, what's cool is uh, you know, Microsoft, we've, we've been in this space for a very, very long time, um, probably more than 15 years. Uh, a good chunk of cars on the road today actually run uh, Windows uh, CE or Windows Embedded Automotive. Here's a sample of some of the vehicles that uh, use Microsoft OS today. The way that folks have been doing this to date is using, uh, using embedded as sort of the core operating system kernel upon which they would build their own user experience value add. So we didn't really have a point of view in the past on, well, what, what should we paint in the dashboard of the car? Uh, the question is, you know, what are we going to do going forward? Like, we've, we've been doing this for a while. We're going to keep doing this. Like, people really rely on us. Um, but what are we going to do going forward? And so what I'd like to talk about today is how we're going to approach this going forward. So today, in addition to the in-vehicle infotainment operating system that we have today, we're going to add a broadened device approach to our strategy. So that means that uh, given uh, some in-vehicle infotainment system that might run embedded compact or might even run another vendor's operating system. Uh, we're going to work to create a world where I can bring my Windows device into my vehicle. And I'll, I'll do questions later. I want to get through everything, but I definitely want to talk later. Um, I can, I can kind of jack in, and I can get a projection of what's going on on my phone up on the in-vehicle IVI or in-vehicle infotainment system. Um, there's a connectivity standard here. There's more than one, but the predominant one is called MirrorLink, of which our new friends Nokia were one of the uh, early proponents. And it really gives people the best of both worlds. The IVI knows more about your car than anything, so a broadened device like a phone can never usurp the value of the IVI, because that's wired into your vehicle. At the same time, if you think about, you know, the I keep my cars for maybe eight years. And my technology, my computer, and my car kind of gets longer and longer in the tooth every year. Um, but I change my phones like I change my underwear, like I'm getting a new phone all the time. And so um, I really want to be able to use the best of my, my own personal technology uh, in the IVI where it's appropriate. And so uh, here's kind of a conceptual view of, of what that looks like. Um, a few things that we really try to address. So this problem is definitely not as simple as like blast the phone UI, you know, bit blit my phone up on the IVI, call it done. It's a pretty complicated problem. We've been studying this for quite a while, given our, given our history in this space, and working with auto manufacturers to help us. Um, there are really four key issues that, that need to be addressed as you're building an, uh, a UI that sits in, in the car dashboard. One is cognitive load. Driving a car is a complex activity. What you need to do is enable people to do the things that they want to do while driving and do that in a way that allows them to keep most of their gray matter focused on the task at hand, which is driving. So whether I'm making a call or text message or listening to music or whatever that activity is, I need to be able to do that with minimal cognitive load. The other is glanceability. There's actually some research here that says that uh, you really have about two seconds to take your eye off the road before the chances of something colossally bad happening go very high. And so when you build user interface that is designed to sit in a moving car, it needs to be optimized for this less than two second glanceability factor. There are a bunch of other human factors as well. For example, when I have my phone, you know, usually I can put it right in front of my face, I can use it with my thumb, it works really well. When I'm using it in my car, typically that's out at arm's distance. Um, often it's either you know, below or above my, you know, up near the, near the dashboard. Um, so just differences in screen size and interaction model require a different mode of design. And then 
Uh, finally, input modes, like I don't really want to touch tiny things that I might be able to touch with my finger on the phone. That's not the right experience for my car. In fact, most of the time, the right experience for my car is voice. And I think you saw Cortana today that voice is actually getting pretty good as, as an input mode to really understand your intent and to be able to put that into action for you. Uh, so I'd like to show you guys, though, a little bit more than, um, than just a screenshot. What I'd like to do is show you a little bit of a demo. I'm going to mute my music in my car. And I'm going to switch over to make sure I've got the right device here. So in much the same way that an auto company would create a concept car to show latest technology, latest design, uh, human factors integration, um, think of this as our concept car for the IVI. Imagine this as a projection of my phone up on my, my vehicle screen. Um, here I've got uh, the start page uh, for my car, if you will. You can see I've got some key information about uh, speed limits and things I need to know right now. I'm able to pin things that are important to me right here, so common tasks I can go and I can pin. Um, I'm able to, uh, to go and maybe select different views. Maybe it's not navigation. Maybe I care more about now playing. Uh, I've got a really nifty swishy sound when I, when I move around. One of the things you notice here is there's, there's this opportunity for application builders to also participate in this ecosystem in a couple different ways. You can imagine that uh, maybe if my car is in park, I can run any kind of arbitrary app, you know, project that up to this screen. But if my car is in drive mode, one of the things that we will aim to do is enable application builders to write apps that conform with good drive, safe drive mode behavior and safe drive mode user interface standards so that, um, so that they can participate here as well. So interesting stuff. If I, I can go to the maps experience, um, it's really small, but you might be able to see that the map is currently centered on Pacific Raceways right now near Seattle. Um, that's not a joke, by the way. Um, this isn't something that we just dreamed up in our UI lab and I'm kind of showing it. We actually put this in the dash of cars and we use it in, in two environments. One is we have a full wraparound simulator with kind of eye tracking so we could tell where people are glancing as they're using this kind of thing and driving in the simulator. But we also really do take this to the racetrack and try and see, okay, does this really work like we plan on it working? Um, but of course, I can, you know, I can choose to go somewhere else. Um, maybe I want to go home and uh, go ahead and start. Oh, start no worky. This is why it's a concept, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> so let's, uh, let's head back here, try this one more time. Hey, look, it was like I never crashed. Sorry, that's a, that's a bad term to use here, isn't it? Let's head over to, uh, looks like Moby. Let's go ahead and pause Moby while we're working. Um, so we saw navigation. The other thing that's interesting is communication. And there are a few different modes of communication that, uh, that would be important to me. One is obviously calls. So um, I should be able to touch the tile to somebody that I uh, want to get in touch with, make that call. Uh, I wonder if David's home, I'm not sure. The number you are trying to reach is unavailable at the tone. Okay, I guess David's not there. Um, the other thing I can do is take a look at um, you know, frequent contacts. I can look, for example, at my messages. I could say, ah, this text message, yes, go ahead and read that one to me as an example. Um, coming over to media, you can imagine integration with all of my media sources. Uh, certainly those on my phone, but also ideally those that exist in my car as well, um, to be able to tune, for example, to a particular radio source, or maybe even to Xbox radio. Um, to be able to go through my collection of media on my device and manage it and play it from there. So that's just a taste, again, uh, more of a concept. Um, but a concept that we're working very, very seriously on so that we can bring the best of these two worlds, the IVI and my broad-end Windows device together.